and he's asking me uh, how is economics and markets related uh, so how do I what is uh, what is the market the market is a place where you're going to buy or sell anything any financial instrument any asset or any commodity okay and uh, what you're exchanging is, is something of value right now the value of that particular asset or commodity which you which you're going to exchange in the market is very closely related to what is happening in the in the economy because the value of that particular asset or commodity which you're going to trade in the market is derives its value from what it's what it is worth in the economy so from that perspective the markets and the economics are very closely related so that's a more broader answer in a more specific answer if you're asking specifically about how stock markets are related to uh, uh, the, the the macroeconomy the economics uh, the, mac, the, the stock markets are essentially a place where you will be trading and buying and selling shares of a particular company. Now the shares of a particular company are nothing but the equity value or the shareholder value of the firm. Now any firm which operates in an, no firm operates in a silo, they operate in an economy where you know everything is connected. So how well an economy is performing is very closely, very, uh, very much affects how well they the company is going to be performing and how the company is going to be performing will affect you as an investor in the stock market. So from that point, uh, the, the health of the economy is very closely related to the value of the stocks or the shares that you will buy in the share market. So from that perspective, the economics and the markets are, are also related very closely. Do I have any other questions? I'm still waiting for some more questions. So I have this question from Ram, which is, uh, he's asking me a question related to fund accounting in financial markets. Uh, you know, but this is a this is a topic. This is a topic. So, so I would uh, I would advise uh, you to have questions related to macroeconomics, uh, fund accounting in uh, financial markets. That will be a different topic. That will be uh, that will generally fund, uh, fall in the category of mutual funds. So I'm sure when you have a, a seminar on mutual funds, you can raise this question then. I would request uh, uh, everybody to have their uh, microphones in mute. <coughs> okay, so I have a question from Vishal. He's asked me, what is a budget deficit? Okay, firstly, uh, to understand what is a deficit, generally this budget, budget deficit, uh, the fiscal deficit, all this falls in the parameter of the government. Now, to understand this question, uh, first you have to understand what does the government do. Where, what is the source of money for the government and where does the government spend? Okay. Now, for any government, the main source of money are taxes. Okay. Now, in taxes, you, you earn taxes and then you spend uh, on welfare schemes, on building roads, on providing health care for the poor people, on, 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 on basically on, on social welfare and other such uh, areas. That is, the, that is broadly one of the main roles of a government. They take taxes from uh, the earning people and the corporates and they use this money to fund welfare schemes. That's one of the main roles. Now in many countries what happens is that the amount that a government spends exceeds the amount that it earns. The difference between what the government spends and what it earns, if, it's, if, if it spends more than what it earns, then we have a deficit. When the government spends more than it earns, it's called a fiscal deficit. Uh, budget deficit is is also sort of a similar term. Uh, you, you could say the fiscal deficit and budget deficit are closely related. So it's got to do with the fact that the government is spending more than what it is earning. Now, how does the government spend more than it earns? What is the source of money 
for the government so that it can spend more than what it is earning in a given year? And the answer is debt. So the government takes in debt, it borrows money, it can borrow money from its own people, it can borrow money from the banks, it can borrow money from international investors. So it borrows money and finances this deficit. So the larger the fiscal or the budget deficit of a country, the more it has to borrow. And if it keeps borrowing more and more and more, then that is not a healthy sign of a, of a government. The problem that you see in Europe right now is primarily because most of their governments ran a very high deficit, a very high budget and a fiscal deficit, and this, they borrowed a lot of money and spent on a lot of social welfare schemes. They borrowed a little too much, and the problem that Greece and all the companies that are, all the countries that are facing right now is that they are finding it very difficult to pay back the amount of money that they borrowed. So deficit is what leads to debt, and very high debt might lead to some big repayment problems in the future, which countries like Greece are facing right now. So I have a question from Vivek, which is uh, saying, is stock market a true barometer of economic performance of any country, or we should look at the currency? So the answer to this question is, uh, so, the, so again, the question is a little long, so let me repeat that. So the question is, uh, is the stock market a true barometer of economic performance of any country, or we should look at the currency? Uh, the answer, the short answer to this question is that neither, neither the stock market nor the currency are good barometers of whether the, the, the economy of that country is performing well. Why? Let's take one at a time. So let's take the stock markets. Stock markets, it's not the case that if stock markets are performing very well, then the economy starts performing. The, the economy starts performing very well. Rather, it's, it's reverse causality. If the economy is performing very well, then more often than not, you will see the stock market performing very well. So whether the stock market is doing very well or not, does not really give you an indication whether the economy is doing very well or not. Why? Because there are many other factors which affect the stock markets, which cannot be said about the economy. Let me give you an example. So one example is, let's suppose we have a lot of uh, foreign money coming into India and investing in stock markets. So suppose there's a lot of liquidity in the US and Europe, Liquidity by liquidity, I mean there's a lot of uh, floating, free floating money floating around, and this money is looking, uh, it is trying to come into other emerging market economies. Investors are looking to invest in other emerging market economies. And if a lot of this free money comes flooding, flooding into India via FIIs, that will obviously have a very high, that will obviously cause the stock markets to increase a lot. But this increase in stock market wasn't caused by fundamental factors in, a country, in our country getting very good, becoming very good. It was basically caused by financial institutions pouring in a lot of money in India and causing uh, the stock markets, the stock prices to appreciate a lot. So we see that just because financial institutions are putting in a lot of money into the Indian stock markets, that is why the stock market is increasing, not because the fundamentals of the economy are changing very drastically, are changing a lot. Similarly, with currency, it's not the case. There's sometimes this notion that if currency, if if our currency is very highly valued, if it's if it's if it's uh, you know, if it's uh, at a very high rate against the dollar, so it's like if right now the uh, dollar to rupee is 63 or 64, uh, there's this strong notion that if Rupee starts appreciating to say 40 or 30, that means our economy is doing very well. No, the currency is not a factor which you should use to judge whether the economy is doing very well or not. As a matter of fact, countries like China who have been performing very well uh, economically over the last 10 years, they have been trying to reduce the value of their currency against the dollar. They were intervening in the currency markets so that they, uh, by their own volition, could reduce the value of their currency. Why were they doing that? They were doing that primarily because they wanted their currency to be low 
so that their exports market would still be leading the world, so that they could still export their products to everywhere in the world. Because the China's economy is extremely uh, export dependent, and the exports of a, com of a country are much more competitive if the currency is devalued. So if the Indian rupee starts appreciating a lot, our exports market will take a major hit. So, and that will not be good for our economy. So currency is also not a very good barometer to measure whether uh, our, our economy is doing very well or not. The best measure, to, uh, the best barometer to measure whether our economy is doing very well or not is primarily the GDP. Although GDP is only focused on the total value of goods and products and goods and services that the country is producing. But across the world, it is acknowledged that if you want to measure the health of a particular economy, the rate of the growth of the GDP is a better barometer to measure how well the economy is performing. So I have another question from Advet. Uh, he's asking, do IIP numbers help in economic performance? Uh, so let me rephrase the question a bit. Uh, let me let, let me break down the question a bit. IIP numbers do not help the economic performance. IIP numbers are a consequence, are a snapshot of what is happening in the economy. So it is just giving you the. So we have an index, just like the Nifty and the Sensex is, is an index for stock values for, for the prices of of stocks. Uh, in uh, uh, in case of IIP, there is also there, there is also this index uh, which measures industrial production. How much of production is happening in the industries in our country? So there is this index, just like Nifty measures stock value. There is this index IIP, index of industrial production, which ma measures the total value, uh, which sort sort of measures the total value of the uh, economic production in the industries in our country. So if the IIP numbers are growing. If the index is growing, that means what? From one month to the other, the industries are producing more goods and services. So obviously, when the industries are producing more goods and services, that is a good sign. That's a healthy sign of the economy because there is demand for these goods and services, and that's why the industry is are producing these goods and services. So growing IIP numbers is an indication of a healthy economy. However, one thing needs to be mentioned about IIP numbers is that IIP numbers are extremely cyclical in the sense that IIP numbers are published every month and you have monthly patterns coming in IIP numbers. So for example, in months which have a lot of holidays, you will see IIP numbers month on month going down. Right? So, so, so for example, around October, probably the IIP numbers generally tend to go down a bit because people start going on holidays. So the thing where one should be comparing IIP numbers is the year on year IIP numbers. So for example, on 2014, the IIP, <clears throat> the growth in the IIP between February and March was X percent, and on 2015, the growth in the IIP between uh, February and March was uh, Y percent. So you compare this X on X and Y. This this year-on-year -year comparison should be made, and the month-to-month -month comparison has a lot of cyclical features features inbuilt into it. So I have another question from Parth. He's asking, please explain the product approach for calculating uh, GDP. In the product approach for calculating GDP, essentially what you are doing is you're trying to find the total. So what is GDP? GDP is nothing but the total value of the goods and services uh, produced in a particular country. The total value of the final goods and services, which is very important. You have to understand this. Total value of the final goods and services produced in any country. In any country. Now, the biggest problem is that how do you understand whether a company or a firm which produces a good, whether it's a final good or an intermediate good? So it's 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 very difficult to understand whether because it's a, for example, if a, country, if a farmer, if, a, if there's a farm which produces oranges, some of these oranges could be sold directly in the market as a final as a finished good. So somebody could be buying oranges. And some of these oranges might be going into, uh, you know, a, a, a juice, a, a firm which produces soft drinks, which could be producing some soft drink based on oranges. 
So they could be taking taking this orange gin as an intermediate product and then creating the finished uh, orange juice as the finished product. So the the best way to calculate GDP, that is the total value of the finished goods and services using the product approach, is take for each firm that is there in the economy, you take the value add that that firm has given to its product. What does that mean? It means, so suppose you take the orange juice firm, the orange juice bought some of the uh, bought some of these goods, which is uh, oranges, and produced orange juice. Say suppose it bought orange oranges worth what six, uh, let's say six crore bucks, six crore rupees, and produced uh, orange juice worth ten crore rupees. So they give so th their finished product is priced at ten crores overall for the entire year, and they they bought. Uh, uh, intermediate goods, that is oranges for 6 crores. So what is the value addition that they are giving? They are adding a value of 4 crores to this product because they bought intermediate of 6 crores and their finished product is what 10 crores. So they give an, a value addition of 4 crores. The product that goes to measuring GDP is, is to calculate this value addition for all firms. If you do this value addition approach, then you avoid double counting. And if you add the value addition bar for each firm in the country, you get the total GDP. That's how you do the product approach of calculating GDP. Now, of course, you could ask me that how can you do this value addition calculation for all firms in the uh, in the country? Of course, it's not possible because there are too many firms and too many goods. So there's a level of approximation and a level of statistical estimation that is done, which is beyond the scope of this particular uh, exercise and this particular course that we have. But there is a uh, there is a statistical approximation that is done to measure this the GDP. Uh, 